Hi, I'm Dennis Weiss. I work for Eagle Communications. Welcome to Why Like Ike. We have a terrific discussion today with a couple of familiar faces, Tim Reeves, Jeff Nelson. They're the experts. I'm just a guy who gets to ask questions about my favorite <laughs> subject, Dwight David Eisenhower. And today we're talking about presidential rankings. And you go, presidential rankings, or that's a poll. It, no, not really. It's history's view of a very important person to our area and to the nation and indeed the world. And that's Dwight David Eisenhower. The good news, Tim, the Dwight David Eisenhower's perspective is viewed from the world is pretty high. Very high. Uh, but it wasn't by historians after he left office. In fact, the first big poll, a presidential ranking poll, Ike was placed 22nd out of 34. Wow. And which really um, angered Ike and his inner circle, and they began to take steps uh, to, to remedy that, one of which was a large publication project of his papers by Johns Hopkins University Press, which his brother ran conveniently. And the next step were the records here at the library. And so the, the, the idea was to get the record out there as quickly as possible to correct this uh, perception that historians had of Ike as kind of a do-nothing president. We get to do a lot of things before the camera comes on, you know, while we're setting up and stuff. And I, you made this comment, showed me the letter, and I just find it fascinating. So, but isn't that often um, how we truly work our way towards what we call the truth in history, is by correcting the mistakes? Yeah, there's kind of this initial impression and then the record comes out, and there's some revision or reevaluation, and it, it seems to be common with every president. I mean, whether it's George sure. W. Bush or Barack Obama, we don't know enough right now to really make an informed judgment, and that's why you see so much revision over time. Sometimes the president's reputation will go way down. Woodrow mm -hmm. Wilson's has steadily gone down. Mm -hmm. um, John F. Kennedy, who's you know a very attractive president in a lot of ways, his reputation has suffered some. Right simply because of the brevity of, it, of his administration. Hmm. And a lot of people don't put, a lot of historians don't put a whole lot of stock in this because it is kind of a guessing game for some people. Um, but the big polls, like the C-SPAN poll that just came out, which has moved Ike up to number five into the great category, they'll use like, say, a hundred historians from all across the political spectrum and have some definite criteria that we could probably talk about. And so there are some more objective polls than just simply an opinion poll or, or gut reaction, but it is a long-term process. You know, I think all, all of us who are blessed to be in, in front of the camera this morning uh, were exposed enough to Eisenhower and this conversation mm -hmm. that we maybe have a different perspective than someone watching at home or on the internet. Um, but the power of Eisenhower's records here in mm -hmm. this place, these artifacts that Jeff brought for us today, here in this place, we see all the time. Yeah, we do. People only come and see them once in a while, but history has now had the chance to look at the data mm -hmm. and the facts for quite some time. And in that time, Eisenhower's ranking's going up. And yeah, you can chart it, and it's just a steady ascent mm -hmm. up, up the polls. I prefer to think the more the world knows, the better they like. I, that's been the case. Mm -hmm. The more historians have known about Eisenhower, the, you know, and, and again, it, it's across the spectrum. It's not just a certain type of Republican or conservative that likes Ike. It's, it really is a very broad base of support now. So we've answered the question to Sam's title for this show, Why Like Ike? Because we know what he did. That's why we like Ike. That's right. The world now knows what he did. And why he did. And why he certain did Certain things. And what it took to accomplish mm -hmm. those things. Yeah. It's an amazing story. Okay, Jeff, uh, I'm going to talk about some of the, you're going to talk about some of these things, but you raised some great questions and, and I think uh, such a great one sitting right in front of me. Uh, it's a box and it's got a flag in it. We'll tell the story. Um, this is a uh, flag for the uh, Republic of Taiwan. Um, it was presented to uh, Eisenhower as president by uh, a group of former uh, Chinese prisoners of war that had been captured in Korea. Um, they were renouncing their uh, communist affiliation and, and um, stating that they were willing to uh, start fighting for democracy uh, in Taiwan and, and for, uh, for the United States, mm -hmm. uh, in particular, for their promotion of, of personal freedom. Uh, we, we picked this uh, artifact, and actually we can um, take, the, take the lid off. 
and you can hold that up and, and you can see the, the actual flag. This was handmade by the prisoners. Uh, and the red uh, on the uh, Taiwanese flag, the red on this particular flag uh, was dyed uh, by the prisoners using their own blood to prove their loyalty. It uh, kind of makes a statement, doesn't it, Jeff? Uh, Eisenhower. Uh, it makes a good statement. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we picked this one in, in particular because uh, it fits a couple of the criteria that uh, C-SPAN used to uh, rank the presidents, primarily on moral authority. Uh, obviously, uh, his actions in uh, combating communism and his actions in ending the war in Korea had convinced uh, this group of POWs, and the letter says there were 14,343 of them, um, that freedom was, was worth fighting for as, a, as mm -hmm. opposed to uh, the uh, political system that they had uh, been raised under. Um, it also talk, uh, talks a little bit to, to such things as crisis leadership uh, and international relations. Uh, so, so when uh, our director Tim talks about the, the methodology that's used to rank these, and it's not simply a, a, a popularity contest, uh, the, the ten criteria that C-SPAN used do span uh, the spectrum from foreign relations to domestic uh, economic management to such things as relations uh, with Congress. Um, you know, as you look at any leaders, <clears throat> a quality that we always wonder about and therefore intuitively rank people with is their ability to inspire others. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that we've had a more sincere example sitting on a table in front of us on a Why Like Ike program than this. Uh, the camera may not have picked it up, but it's all hand stitched, which means it was handmade. And you kind of have to, if you're putting your own blood on for the red in the flag, uh, that was all done by hand as well. But the reality of it is these are, these are not Americans. Right. These are Chinese prisoners from a prison camp in Korea. Uh, they were simply observing the results of Dwight David Eisenhower as the world viewed him. I don't know of a, a, a better or a more significant demonstration of what they would have voted than that flag. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a very good demonstration of that. Um, another demonstration of, of the power of his uh, moral convictions uh, can be found in this uh, simple little rock here, which mm. simply says, Little Rock, 1957 A.D. Yeah. Um, I think we did a whole program on that uh, uh, some time back, but it, it, it's often just forgotten, though. I mean, when you talk to, I, I still have a boy in school, and you, uh, he's fortunate enough to be exposed to a lot of Eisenhower, but, you know, if you talk to the generation, you talk about civil rights, there's oftentimes Eisenhower's name doesn't come up? It does not. There's a lot of revision on that subject. Now, again, as the record uh, becomes available to mm -hmm. historians, Eisenhower sent the 101st Airborne in right. uh, to Little Rock to enforce a court order to integrate the schools. Right. The governor of Arkansas was refusing, really, to enforce the order to integrate the schools. Mm -hmm. And so Eisenhower sent a very strong message by sending in the same division that he sent into Normandy the night before the D-Day invasion. Yeah, isn't that, that something? that was not a mistake. Yeah, yeah. That, that wasn't an accident. No. That was a deliberate act by a president using presidential executive branch authority to guide the nation on a path that must be took. That's right. Yeah. It's an amazing time. Um, the, this, this rock was sent to Eisenhower uh, by a gentleman from New York, uh, a reverend. And he wrote a poem to go with it. And we'll, we'll get a wide shot of it off the, the top the here. The poem is titled, uh, Monuments to, to Freedom from Little Rocks Do Grow. Uh, so even nice. at the time, people uh, could sense that this signaled a, a fairly major sea change, change in how mm -hmm. civil rights were going mm -hmm. to be dealt with in the United States. Yeah. And um, within a decade or two, uh, we were starting to see some major uh, changes in civil rights legislation. Uh, Eisenhower also um, was effective dealing with uh, the economy uh, and infrastructure. His most famous uh, uh, infrastructure uh, project uh, is the interstate highway system. Uh, I-70 is part of the uh, Eisenhower uh, interstate highway. Um, he also uh, participated with the Queen of England in uh, getting the St. Lawrence Seaway built. Uh, right. which is a huge uh, uh, economic help uh, 
for both the U.S. and the and Canada. And it's a beautiful day trip too. I got to yeah. tell you. Uh, he also uh, yeah. managed mm -hmm. to increase the United States by two uh, while he was president. Uh, this uh, shell casing is uh, from uh, the volley of shells that was fired when the state of Alaska became a right. state, not a territory. Uh, Eisenhower was the only president to serve under three different U.S. flags, 48, 49, and yeah. 50 uh, U.S. stars. You know, some of these things we've talked about in prior programs and, and why we're bringing them back to you today on Why Like Ike is, again, we see these things as artifacts and we, we normally think about them with Eisenhower, but this is a chance for you to understand why First of all, the fact that Eisenhower's ranking as a president mm -hmm. continues to climb, but it's the wealth of material that has been put in front of the world's public that is driving that opinion model. Absolutely. And you really start to see that reputation change in the early 70s, again, as more and more records in Abilene became available to researchers. And it has been a, a very steady climb. Um, and again, now he's in that category that historians consider great presidents. And same company as Lincoln and Washington, two of his heroes. And so it's a major accomplishment um, for Ike's legacy that it's now seen in, in that light. And we're happy to be the ones uh, to provide the material historians need to make those assessments. So the letter you let me read while ago um, um, has some interesting names. Uh, oh, it really does. Um, when that first New York Times poll came out in 1962 that ranked Ike only 22nd out of 34 presidents, his son John, who was a very staunch defender of his father's reputation, wrote an angry letter to a, a friend of his talking about it and how it was almost like a conspiracy of these Harvard professors mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. thought more about personality than they did about the actual record right. of, an, of an administration. and. Uh, as you saw in the letter, he actually, John refers to, uh, says he agrees with Napoleon that history is a greed fiction. And that's, that's how he interpreted this, mm -hmm. that initial take mm -hmm. on his father, that it was an agreed fiction because it really wasn't based on the fact of the records. Let's, let's flesh that out. Napoleon said that. Napoleon said right? that. There were no presidential libraries around during Napoleon's day, there were not. one. Uh, records, records in Alexandria were, were accessible to a handful of human beings, mm -hmm. True. which is why history was, as described by Napoleon, an agreed to, fantasy was the word? Uh, agreed was fiction. Was a fiction, so, agreed yeah. fiction, okay. So agreed fiction means I tell a story and Sam agrees to it and she tells somebody, and that's agreed fiction. When you have the records, mm -hmm. when you have the artifacts, when you have the, f the, my always most impressive thing here, you won't get to see probably, are rows and rows and rows of after action reports from World War yes. II. Row upon row upon row upon row. Handwritten many times mm -hmm. facts of that conflict. When you have facts, it removes the need to agree on fiction. You well, have the truth. And what's interesting, going back to Napoleon, archives as we know them now, as records of governments, began around that time. Right. And so it wasn't until the mid to late 19th century that historians had access to the records of their governments, and that's why history became more objective and less of an agreed fiction, although, as you said, we're, there is still some of that. Mm -hmm. You see, you see the push from different political factions today, mm -hmm. and that's why current serving or near serving presidents, our view of them in the world is often modified by somebody's willing perception. And that's why so many former presidents, and now they're living 20, 30, 40 years after their presidency, wow. a lot of what they do is legacy management and trying to shape that perception, mm -hmm. that future perception of historians. Mm -hmm. And so it is an interesting battle, and it is political on, on their part, too. So the a president's reputation, when they immediately leave office, is just, yeah, um, mm -hmm. probably not worth a whole lot <laughs> in yeah. terms of how historically that person will be viewed, you know, for better or worse. The, um, George Bush. Uh, 43, um, 
I remember him being asked a question. I don't remember what the question was, but his answer was, I, I'll I'm be dead by then. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll be dead by then. One of them, but I'm content to let history deal with right, that. Right. Uh, I thought that was a, an amazing confidence being expressed. And, and, and the confidence is not in himself necessarily. <coughs> the confidence is that history in the modern era all will be revealed about your presidency in one day. Eisenhower had the same attitude. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Some, someday they'll know. Can't control it now, but someday they'll know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what haven't we talked about on how they rank the think criterion? Uh, Jeff mentioned it shortly. Mm -hmm. So what haven't we talked about? Yeah, there's a number of things. Um, his administrative his administrative skills, and that's actually one of the things Eisenhower was criticized for in office. They thought that, well, he's this general, he just delegates everything to his staff, um, but doesn't really do the hard work. And he did try to cultivate that, that uh, perception as well, but then the records came out and showed um, that Eisenhower liked to operate by what he called the hidden hand, and that he may have a subordinate do something, but then that also deflects blame from President Eisenhower. And so he would have his Secretary of State, John Foster Dulles, make the unpopular statement. Mm -hmm. And so that's not coming back on him personally. So he did have those kind of administrative and leadership skills to help manage his political reputation at that time. Very, very skillful in that way. Uh, relations with Congress is another way that, that they're graded in the C-SPAN poll. Eisenhower met with legislative leaders weekly and also entertained them socially at the White House and had one of the highest success rates in passing his legislation of about 70 percent. And that was with having an opposition Congress for six to eight years that he was president. So he was very skillful. You know, Eisenhower was so good at face-to-face -face relationships mm. and in building consensus as he did during World War II. And so he applied that uh, politically as well. Um, the vision is, is a big one. And, you know, he knew long term that projects like the interstate or the mm -hmm. St. Lawrence Seaway were vital to the country's economic success. Mm -hmm. I think the greatest example is during World War II, towards the end of the war, when he toured one of the death camps, concentration camps, and he said, we have to document this now because people in the future will try to deny that it ever happened. Yeah. He was exactly right. And yeah. so a lot of the record we have of those camps being liberated is because Eisenhower requested that journalist and members of Congress. So he really had that foresight. That's uh, obviously, uh, I, I think I've said this before, but I'll, I'll say it again because new people watch all the time. His, his statement was, I came here today because I wanted to be able to say that I saw mm -hmm. these things. In case someone tries to say it never happened. Yeah, like, no, it wasn't some sergeant who wrote a report. Right. I was here to see these things. His person, he put his personal credibility, great thing for a leader, put your personal credibility in between you and the issue. And um, yeah, he was, sure he's again, that, that's one of his talents. He could see the long game, how mm -hmm. things are going to play out over a very long historical epoch, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's, you know, something controversial like whether, you know, the Holocaust or some other historical event even happened. He had that kind of wisdom. We, we've made a number of programs about, and, and always have said relevance, relevance, relevance. So, you know, if you look at the topic today, Eisenhower's ranking over time as a president, uh, relevance certainly is part of that game. Mm -hmm. and it, it, if, it, even if people thought he was a great guy and a great president, if he was not relevant to the issues at the time the poll is taken, Mm -hmm. It would push those rankings down because oh he was he was great at this but that doesn't mean anything right other to things me. become more salient right and so and that's why these polls tend to have some some peaks mm -hmm. and valleys but his has been even with the peaks and valleys a very steady climb yeah but it also Dave gave me the two minute mark but you know we see researchers here we set a record almost every year yeah, we do it's and th the facts of Eisenhower. Are, are just proving relevancy mm -hmm. in today's world. There, there's hardly any topic that's in the news on any major network today right. that you can't come here and find wisdom about how it was handled, what was done, and how it turned out. So relevant. That's right. I mean, they're talking about 
you know, this major infrastructure bill, it'll be the largest since Dwight Eisenhower. Isn't that something? So, yeah. Okay, well, I had fun. You have fun, Jeff? Oh, yeah. Tim? Every day. Every day. It's a great day. Well, folks, we know that you will have appreciated the material that the gentlemen presented today. I had a great time talking to them. I wish you a great day. I'm Dennis Weiss for Eagle Communications. Have a good day.